doing five here. Um, as you may have seen in one of my videos that I removed early quick on that thing because um, it didn't really show what I wanted it to do. It was for a potato gun, right? And we still had that same potato gun. And um, right here I've got a sparker that I've made recently. It's uh, This is, you know, to, I'm making this video to help you guys learn how to make one for a potato gun. It's quick, cheap, easy, and fun to make, you know. Um, all you need is like, all you'll need is one standard grill lighter, five dollars, ten dollars most. The standard grill lighter electric, see, it'll come with a black wire and a red wire. You don't need the red wire, but it's very handy to have around. Um, you're gonna need a soldering gun and um, and some solder. That's about it, and some really like glue that'll. It's really strong glue, like Gorilla Glue or something that's really hard. We used this Elmer's Glue. I don't know what you call it because I don't have the thing with me right now. But unfortunately, I don't have. I couldn't make it in front of you guys because it took way too long, and I couldn't even do a time lapse. So I'm just gonna show you what it looks like in a quick way to make it. I mean, like the only reason it took so long is because the glue took forever to harden, and then you know it took a couple of tries, but we got it drilled correctly. They go and show you how this works. You press this button right here, which is installed via drill. Like all you gotta do is you drill a hole around this width. Like you see the sparker. Drill about that width of the sparker, and then drill two little um, linking holes, as I'm gonna call them, because there'll be two pieces that you squeeze together that just interlock with the inside. So you just kind of fit it through that hole, see if I can, like, see, right there, and right there. We put those in there, then you have the wire, which you strip, you need to strip it about, um, not, you don't need it short, but you don't need it long, kind of, I mean, it's a pretty long piece of, uh, wire, so I'd suggest, you know, like, a fifth of it in size. You strip it from there and leave a large amount of uh, wire left open, like about that amount. Then you take some solder to the wire and you solder around the wire so it creates a nice, like, thick bar instead of frayed wires because after a bunch of while of sparking and explosions in the inside, it's going to wear the wires, they're going to twist and bundle. And I'm not saying this is hard to change, but you know it's just going to last you longer. And um, by the way, this these metal parts will corrode inside of it, so make sure to clean them regularly. But um, like this piece, which the spark comes out of, and then this piece down here, which is metal, that's going to corrode. As a matter of fact, I think this is already starting to corrode just a tad bit. Yeah, it's got a little bit of corrosion on it right now. But, um, Axe is not the cleanest burning fuel in the world. It leaves a bad stank to it, so I suggest, um, you know, you can use Axe, whatever you want, but hairspray and Axe work pretty good. But, um, yeah. So you just glue it in there after you drill a hole, and, uh, as you can see, it's very, uh, hard to. You can't even move it, actually. I mean, you could probably throw it on the floor or something like that and it wouldn't do anything but here I'll give you an example of what the spark looks like which is definitely enough to light a fire no doubt especially on compressed like compressed explosive air that has no exp escape hence com ex you know what I mean but anyway, so you just put that in the cap, like I did, install it in there, and uh, by the way, this is ju just duct tape to look cool, and it, it helps take it off easier because it gives you better grip instead of just plastic, which your fingers can slide on. And um, by the way, it comes with very stiff wire, so you don't have any problems about it really moving around in the explosion. But, um, like I said, though, make sure you clean it regularly so it doesn't corrode as much as it normally would. Then it'll stop working, which is definitely not a positive. 
And uh, I think these things can run out of electricity in them. I'm not quite sure. So you may have to change them every, I don't know, every year. Which isn't too bad. You just take a hammer and knock that part out right there. Knock it to the back. And then re-glue it in another one. Um, and there you go, I guess. If not, you know, it's just much easier probably if you buy another cap. And then buy another lighter to be anyway. Because, you know, that way you don't have to worry about all the collateral damage, as I'm going to call it. Anyway, so that's how you make a spark or for a potato gun. Cheap, easy, lightweight, doesn't take up a lot of room. And you can just install it on the back where you just hit the button or where you can, um, like, just, you know, it even looks cool, too. You can put it on the side. You can put whatever you want, designing on how your potato gun. Later this week, I will be showing you my potato gun itself, and then I'll be showing you it firing, hopefully, at my friend Josh's house. We're back in the woods. There's this old car that's been burnt up and crap like that. We're going to shoot that. And, you know, just... By the way, these potato guns have a lot of force and they're not to really be messed with, so... Be careful. Stay safe. And have a good time shooting taters.